begin with what's leading tonight in the news. Zimbabwe's opposition leader Nelson Chamisa is planning on challenging President Emerson Mangagwa's re-election, citing irregularities during this week's polls. Members of Parliament have wrapped up their oversight visit to illegal mining hotspots in the northwest in Gauteng by proposing changes to laws. And the EFF says it's planning a court bid against the Reserve Bank's report, which cleared President Sir Ramaphosa of wrongdoing in the theft of foreign currency matter at his Palapala farm. Good Sunday night. I am Tabo Mdili. Good to be with you as we start a brand new week uh, here uh, on In Focus. Zimbabwean President Emerson Nangagwa has welcomed the outcome of uh, this week's disputed election. The Electoral Commission declared his re-election with over 52% of the vote, while the leader of uh, the main opposition, Nelson Chamisa, got 44%. Nangagwa says uh, the results show how far the country has come in its democratic journey. That I did not conduct the elections. I competed with them in this race to win the elections. And I'm happy that I won the race. I think those who wish to the race was not running properly should know where to go to complain. I'm so happy that the race was run explicitly, transparently, and they fair broad daylight. And I'm happy that it was huge turnout uh, by our people. I'm sure that very few uh, people in this country will say that the elections were marked by any uh, violence. It was, there was no violence at all. And I think this is what we should, as a change and continue to maintain. This is now shows how mature our democracy is. Nagagwa has also justified the arrest of some election observers, saying they went beyond their call of duty. Yes, I'm aware that some observer missions went beyond their call of duty and began interrogating legislation passed by our parliament. It is my view that every single sovereign country passes their legislation through their legislature. There is probably an exception. And the legislature is composed of the people of this country, and it is through that uh, arm of the state where we have it what we want as a country. I don't think it is in the uh, mandate of election observers to interrogate institutions of the Soviet government, the judiciary, the legislature, and governance. I believe that their mandate is to observe transparency, uh, peacefulness, and fairness conduct of elections, which I'm ready to say no one person is that. Rosano PF spokesperson Chris uh, Mutsangwa says uh, he's disappointed that Citizens Coalition for Change has refused to sign off on results from polling stations. We, we really think that uh, uh, if people go into an election with the idea that if I don't win, therefore the result is not right. It's not a good idea because you are usurping the, the, the decision of the people who are making decisions, who are, who are, who are putting their exes inside the booth. You want, you come there with a predetermined position that is, if they go into a booth, they must vote for me. And then when the results come and some of the votes are not for you, then you say, I can't accept. It's not right. You know, it's, it's not a proper, you don't go into a match on the idea that if I don't win, therefore the match is null and void. It's not a good idea. It doesn't work well uh, we, for African politics. This is not good for democracy. People should accept. But that is it may. 
we, we take comfort in that uh, we have legal systems which are in place and which are a recourse for any people who may have misgivings about how the process has happened. Now, Nelson Chamisa says the irregular manner in which the elections were conducted must be resolved. He's also called uh, for electoral reforms to permanently address the issue. So it is important that whoever is to sit on the throne of government in this country is aligned in legitimacy. And this can only be achieved through respecting what the people voted for, even in an unfree and unfair election such as this one. But more importantly, we want to resolve permanently comprehensively and eloquently the problem of disputed elections in Zimbabwe. Until we resolve this issue, we will continue to have a cycle, a vicious cycle of disputed elections. But for us to be able to move forward, we need to find a permanent answer to electoral reforms going forward so that elections mean peace, elections mean credibility, elections mean legitimacy. As we speak, elections mean war, elections mean intimidation. That cannot be a civilized affair. That cannot be a civilized expectation. Right, let's get some analysis now with uh, Vet Center for Diversity Studies researcher, uh, William Bofo. Mr. Bofo, good to have you, and thank you very much for coming on this evening. Uh, others have looked at uh, the outcome, saying this is a culmination of a crisis whose tenants includes a crisis uh, of, of legitimacy. Would you agree with that statement? Yeah, it's not even a crisis of legitimacy, but... Um, it's a tragedy of legitimacy in that um, the political establishment in Zimbabwe has failed to uh, make political contestations, political competition, and navigation of power legitimate. It is not a crisis, it's a tragedy. That is the truth of it. Yeah. So how, how then would ZANU-PF be able to justify its existence as a ruler, I mean, they, they, they are, of course, uh, wanting us uh, and the rest of the world to believe that their rules are, are important normative principles that all of society sh should live by. But if they don't have the legitimacy of that political process, how, how do they establish themselves as authority? Uh, speaking from a political analysis uh, perspective, there's something that ZANU-PF can do for Zimbabwe. ZANU-PF can still be a hero for Zimbabwe. And that is by committing political suicide, which is unbecoming. ZANU-PF must unbecome in order for it to be any use uh, to Zimbabwe. Because right from 1980 up to now, this political unit which has become a political cult, has exercised power as war on Zimbabweans. The best thing that ZANPF can do for Zimbabwe right now is to commit a, a political suicide and unbecome so that Zimbabweans can, after so many years, gain access to liberation, to democracy, and to the freedom and the happiness of the masses in that troubled country. Do you think the leader of ZANU-PF currently, Mr. Nagago, cares about legitimacy? That is the problem in summary, in that um, uh, Emerson Nagago, himself, in himself as a person and as a, a supposed leader right now, has never acquitted himself well with uh, honesty, legitimacy, peace, and democracy. This man has been Mugabe's uh, assassin, Mugabe's bodyguard, Mugabe's dark hand. And the whole world, not just Zimbabwe, expected this man to uh, occasion reforms and changes. He squandered that opportunity. So what Emerson Nangaka can do well for Zimbabwe right now is to commit political suicide, step back, and allow Zimbabwe to become 
uh, the best thing that ZANU-PF can do for Zimbabwe right now, for Africa right now, for the world right now, is to unbecome, commit political suicide, because this is a mess. And as it is, Zimbabwe is just about to be Africa's next trouble spot in that there will be chaos, there will be disorder, there will be violence, and there will be effects that affect neighbors of Zimbabwe, like South Africa, Botswana, Zambia, Mozambique, and all that. That's why AU and SADI must come through for Africa and solve the Zimbabwe question. So, what are the players, or who are the players? I mean, for example, can we say the Triple C and the role that they are playing in, in, for example, challenging these outcomes, would in any way help uh, ZANU-PF in, in, in that unbecoming? Because one would say, well, it's the challenger's role always to delegitimize uh, authority. So it's expected that they would want to, to call them uh, a, a, an illegitimate government. Yeah, wh what is uh, needed here is not really about the opposition. They are too small for the task at hand. It's about Africa. It's about uh, uh, the global south. It's about AU. It's about SADI to work hard to change the political culture in Zimbabwe. Because what we have in front of us here is not the will of the people of Zimbabwe, but the will of a political cult in Zimbabwe led by Emerson Nangapa that has used fraud, has used force to, to occasion uh, political victory, not electoral victory, because everyone knows that this election is stolen by circumstances, by the entire landscape of the electoral uh, occasion, and by everything else, including the exclusion, marginalization, and the barring of other candidates, and all that tilting the electoral landscape against the opposition. As I speak, and as you asked me, Emerson Dambosom Nangwafa knows right now that his victory is illegitimate, is stolen, is fraudulent, and is unjust. But Africa should, for the first time, come through for Zimbabwe and insist on truth, uh, social justice, liberation, and fairness. It, time must come when African liberation um, entities like AU and SADC come through for nationals of individual countries. Otherwise, what we might have in Zimbabwe is uh, another coup. Because when incumbents close all avenues of political contestation and competition for power, the next thing is a coup. Like what is happening in West Africa, where you have an upset of military force. So, SADC and AU should have that early detection mechanism to say, this must stop and this must stop now. We have a problem there and that problem must be solved. Yeah. So, I mean, we, 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 you mentioned the, the, the taking over from uh, uh, Robert Mugabe when Emerson Nangagwa came in. One of the things that he said, whether he was playing to the gallery or not, was that, of course, uh, the, the next elections will be free and fair and mentioned something to the effect that Z Z ZANU-PF can no longer uh, expect to win based on, on liberation uh, memory. Can ZANU-PF be anything else other than uh, rule by co coercion or, 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 or legitimation uh, through liberation memory. That's exactly where we are. ZANU-PF cannot help itself. Emerson Nangakwa cannot help himself. But Africa, Zimbabwe, need to help Emerson Nangakwa negotiate himself out of this equation. Because by biography and by geography, these uh, former uh, liberation movement activists that they are, represented by Mnangakwa right now, 
cannot help themselves. This is part of the African post-colonial elite that has become colonial itself. Whereby, as we speak, Emerson Nangakwa is an enemy of peace, of democracy, and of liberation in Zimbabwe. But it's the African continent, it's the global south, it's Zimbabwe that must ease him out by saying no and no. So it's important that the SATIC observer mission, the AU observer mission, and all other observer missions that have been there in the elections in Zimbabwe have stated clearly that there is fraud, yeah. there is unfairness, there is asymmetry. So this is the time then for everybody to stand up and say, not under our watch. This must end and it must end here. So you're speaking of an AU that has established protocols, articles that they quote. They, they are working within a framework of legality, which of course is a completely separate uh, 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 component to, to legitimacy. How do they argue with a, a, a Emerson Nangako who says, well, I'm, I'm, I'm legally entitled to be in, in this position because of the legal processes that would have been followed by the Electoral uh, Commission. As you hear him in one of the clips that we played, he says, no, I didn't run the, the elections. They were run by the Zimbabwean Electoral Commission. And those who want to dispute them, well, they know where to go, meaning they can go to the courts. So he's, he's basing his legitimacy on legality to say, legally, I am entitled to be here. Uh, I spoke earlier about biocracy. This is Emerson Nangaka who was speaking about, uh, who was the security minister uh, during the, the Kukurawundi genocide that was used to eliminate Zapu as a political opposition in Zimbabwe post uh, independence. We are speaking about Emerson Nangakwa, who was Mukabe's head in the 2008 uh, in the Murambatsina scenario and all other scenarios during Mukabe's tenure. So, who is speaking? What is the legitimacy of the speaker? And what is the truth of the speaker? Zimbabwe needs help, African help, world help, human help from all of us to say, Iti Munangago, you are illegitimate, you are wrong, you are, you are unjust, you are guilty. And, and this problem that is happening in Zimbabwe is not a Zimbabwean problem. It's an African problem. Because, because of this illegitimacy of the political establishment that is being created right now. Neighbors of Zimbabwe, like Botswana, like South Africa, will domestically feel, will domestically experience the Zimbabwean problem. So Africa must stand up and say, no, 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 not under our watch, please. How, how would you intervene on, on, on this point then, Mr. Mpofu? Uh, from, from an analysis point of view, some, some uh, sociologists and, and political anal and, and, uh, analyzers would say legitimacy cannot be established only by following one prescribed source. So credible, free and fair elections is, is not the only process to be followed to establish legitimacy. Um, service. Welfare, sometimes, in, in, in certain instances, uh, people will tell yeah. you that uh, Zandu PF would have uh, maintained maybe those aspects uh, of legitimacy to an extent. Um, what I can say, uh, I'm only a political philosopher. I cannot uh, predict, I'm not a prophet, but as a philosopher, I can uh, project what is needed here is a, a change of political culture. And a change to political culture is not occasioned by the incumbents. That's why I'm saying Nangako cannot help himself and he cannot help Zimbabwe. But Africa, 
uh, African countries and African multilateral institutions can help Nangakwa help Zimbabwe to overturn the structures and the systems of power that are in place and to establish a certain political culture that will make elections in Zimbabwe credible. This has nothing to do with Nangakwa or Chamisa or anyone, but the political culture whereby fraud and force are going to be eased out of the landscape. Then and only then Zimbabweans can make their political decisions and political choices and electoral choices become real. So Nangakwa is a captive of a certain political culture that must be navigated out of the scheme of things. Then and only then that African country, Zimbabwe, can have elections that deliver the will of Zimbabweans, which has not been delivered in these elections or any other, other elections before. How much of that is also a, a part of the broader ecosystem that would, for example, uh, also include military veterans and, and other liberation uh, struggle heroes who, who, who believe really it's, it's, it's their birthright to, to, to liberate the people of Zimbabwe? You are saying it as it is. Uh, there is a crisis of liberation movements in Africa. Those people that fought secular colonialism and then go to a stage and a position where they think they are entitled to these countries, that these countries are their items, that these countries are their artifacts. This is not, it's not just about Zimbabwe, but liberation movements in the entire African continent have a crisis. Which crisis has grown to a tragedy? Where you think because you fought against colonialism, then you are entitled to the country. Then you are entitled to impose your will on the people. Then you are entitled to electoral and political victory. That needs to be negotiated out. Because Manje were in this uh, generation where if you talk to the African populace, who are the young people, liberation war stories are no longer appealing. Liberation war and narratives are no longer appealing. The young people of Africa are asking for delivery pools. Where is liberty? Where is democracy? Where is service delivery? Where is equity? Where are the resources of Africa, which is the continent that is the richest in the world, but its people are the poorest. So, the young people of Africa are asking for those delivery pools, and the liberation movements are unable to deliver those.